Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I have a special treat. <laughs> the treat that I have for you today is we're going to be discussing an Inspector General investigation into my conduct. Uh, I responded to a call for service. The person who called did not like the way I responded to this call for service. They then filed a complaint against me. The Office of the Inspector General investigated this complaint and found that my behavior was rude and discourteous and outside of policy and wrote uh, basically a thing saying that I need to be punished for the way I acted on this call. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you've probably already seen this video, but for those of you who don't, we're gonna play the video in just a hot second. And on this particular call, um, I was dispatched on a call for service about a trespasser. You see this homeless guy standing by this building here? I was called about him and I was asked to make him leave. I did that and the property owner happens to have a camera and that's the video that we're watching here. The camera has audio and he doesn't like the way I spoke to this homeless person. So he called, or actually he sent an email and filed a complaint against me. That complaint was investigated and we're gonna get into some interesting things about the investigation. Uh, some of the things that I'm gonna highlight in today's video or uh, just some of the frustrations that you have as a police officer trying to go out and do your job and that when you do your job, people are going to complain about you, even though when really you didn't do anything wrong. That's the first thing. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is these civilian investigators that are being hired across the entire country to investigate the police because everyone's saying, oh, well, the police can't investigate themselves. They're corrupt. What a yada, yada, yada. Well, the problem with hiring these civilians to do the investigations is that they don't even understand the policies that they're supposed to be investigating. Um, and that will be very clear here in a little bit. And if you want to talk about something that undermines the process and undermines the trust between the police office, the police department and the cities of the community, the citizens of the community, it's going to be investigators that call citizens and give them incorrect information about what it is officers are supposed to be doing, um, making citizens believe that the officers did something wrong when in fact they didn't. And it's quite incredible when I point out what it is that she says, and it's absolutely inexcusable if you ask me. So without further ado, there is a video. I'm going to show you the video. I'll be back in just a minute. Hey, do me a favor and spill the word. Because this guy's been like pulling a lot. He's been flagging us down. Like it's higher time, but he's going to start issuing like a uh, arrest protocol. You know what I mean? I just got my lunch. I understand. The, uh, the city's coming down on him for having people hanging out and leaving trash and stuff. So in order for him to avoid getting in trouble, he's becoming an asshole. Which is kind of how the world works, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just let everybody know that they might get in trouble. I appreciate it. All right, so there you have it. That is the incident. Um, there's a little bit more to the incident that's not shown in this video because he didn't include the part where I initially walked up. Uh, but yeah, this is me. I was dispatched on a call for service about a trespasser. I'll go over the actual dispatch call here in a moment. Um, but the part that's not shown on this is my initial approach. I walk up to him and I said, hey, um, the property owner call doesn't want people on the property. You got to go. And then I started to walk around the building like you can see me right here. I was looking to see if there was any more people out there trespassing on the property. And before I got too far, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to make sure that this guy understands that nobody is supposed to be on this property. So I'm going to go back and talk to him in a little bit more stern language. And I said, hey, hey, can you do me a favor, man? Uh, let everybody know that this guy's been having a lot of problems with people on the property. The city is starting to come down on him because homeless people and drug addicts are leaving trash here. Uh, that's got him under a lot of pressure because he's worried about getting fines and fees. So he's becoming an asshole and making everybody get off his property. And sorry, I got something in my eye. The guy says, yeah, man, I, I understand. No problem. I'll get off the property. And hopefully that's, that was my intent is he'll tell all of his friends, hey, don't go back on that property because that property owner is going to start charging everybody if they start getting on. You know what I mean? That was that was my intent and why I, I did what I did. Now, his complaint, I think I have it. Yep, here it is right here. 
You guys can read along with me. When you send an email complaint to the Office of the Inspector General, this is what it looks like. Although if you do one, I would hope that you don't have the typos and spelling errors and stuff on it. But regardless of the fact, here is his complaint. It says, I own a building at this address and have spoken and have been having prob, prob, three, e, throb, prob 3 EMS problems uh, with trespassers and drug use on the property. I've spoken to officers on two occasions and was told to place calls when poli when people were trespassing. I've done this on three occasions, today being the third. I had a person throwing things at the building and was acting oddly that was wearing what appeared to be a hospital gown. I called, the officer came, he addressed the individual and asked him to leave. He explained that the owner was getting pressure from the city about trash and people around the building, so he was becoming an asshole. That is a direct quote from the officer speaking to the person breaking the law on my property. I do not find that to be professional or acceptable. I am doing what he advised me to do. I have video of the entire interaction with audio. I would like proper advice on how I should handle and comply as well as how I can feel safe on my own property. At this point, I do not feel that the police are on my side. So I showed up on a call about a person on a property that shouldn't be on the property. I asked him to leave said, hey, you know, this guy's getting a lot of pressure from the city. It's making him become an asshole and tell everyone to leave. So you got to go. This guy did not like the way I spoke to him. A little bit of background on this as well is that literally the day before I responded on this call, I was actually on a domestic violence call a few blocks away from this address. Um, I was standing out on the sidewalk talking to my partner as somebody else was inside taking photographs and documenting this case that actually turned out to be a felony strangulation case of domestic violence. Um, and this guy pulls up to us, gets out of his truck, walks up and wants to talk to us about homeless people trespassing at his vacant building. We tried to tell him that we were busy, but he didn't want to hear that. He then told us about the problem and I said, okay, what's the address? Where's the building? He told me, I looked him in the eye and I said, you know what? I will do my best to keep an eye on that property. If anyone is there, I will make sure that they understand that they are not supposed to be on that property. And he asked if he should continue to call. And I said, absolutely. If you want to call, you call, we will do our best to make sure that this is taken care of for you. And then he went about his way. I continued on doing my job with the domestic violence, yada, yada, yada. Now, let's see, I have this is the call for service, and this is what it looks like. This isn't necessarily what it looks like on our computer, but this is the printout. So the very next day, I had just cleared a call, and I looked up at the computer, and I see this call for service holding. It's a uh, 16T trespassing, as it says at the top. It has the address. says who called, and it says if the owner wants to be contacted. It says if needed. So then you scroll down a little bit. It says male white in a hospital gown slash dress sitting at the door, refusing to leave. This is a regular trespassing call. Then right below that, it says, uh, no cars clear on the on 19 precinct. And then two minutes later, cause this came in at 1122, uh, four minutes later, excuse me. I see the run, the call holding. I must've cleared up in the meantime and said, Hey, I'll go ahead and take care of that. Now, a trespassing call is generally a two officer run. They're supposed to send two officers on it because there might be confrontation, yada, yada, yada. Normally trespassing calls aren't that big a deal. I didn't want that run to be holding on the board for a long period of time. I had already given the property owner my word that I would be running people off the property. So I said, you know what radio, go ahead and send me that call by myself. I'll check and advise. So that's where it says 190A will check. I go up to the, and that was at 1126. From that point on, I didn't really look at my computer. I just drove to the address, got out of my car, talked to the individual. Uh, that is exactly the call for service. And that's what I knew while I was also walking around the building, I had to speak to some neighbors that were upset about cars lining up around that building. The reason that kind of all of this stuff began is because right next door to this particular building is a home reach homeless outreach center. A lot of homeless people and drug addicts and stuff go to this. Uh, it's it's kind of like a food giveaway center. They get their food and then they go up the road. 
they sit on this other guy's property and they make a mess. That's what's caused this, this problem with the city. Well, another problem with that place is that, uh, cars line up because a lot of people like to go get free food. It's not just homeless people. Uh, so there's cars lined up down the street and the people that live on that street complain. So we have to go out and uh, make sure they're not blocking driveways, blocking right of ways, all that other kind of stuff. So I did speak to a citizen. I told the dispatcher, Hey, uh, can you add to the run that I spoke to a citizen? They're upset about Jordan's crossing and cars lining up on the street, which that was added to the run. So that was basically it. Now, You've read his complaint. I don't know why my computer keeps doing this. Um, his complaint is right here. He's upset that an officer responded and said that the property owner is becoming an asshole and he doesn't think that's appropriate behavior. Well, what does the office of the inspector general do with this? Uh, she took it a completely different route. I, I guess in order to kind of go there, I must introduce this investigator that's with the office of inspector general who is, is investigating my complaint this is her right here her name is danielle fisher um i actually have a clip from a civilian review board meeting of her introducing herself i'm going to give her the opportunity now to introduce herself to you good afternoon oh good i have afternoon. to speak can you hear me yes okay my name is danielle fisher um I have 22 years of investigative experience, um, 16 years um, in Seattle, Washington. Um, my investigative journey began uh, with the Defenders Association um, working for death row inmates. Um, uh, my degree is from the University of Washington. Um, from there, I went to Las Vegas, Nevada, 17 years there with Clark County, um, juvenile probation. Um, and then the uh, Emergency Response Task Force for eight years working with uh, law enforcement there. Um, it's a pleasure to serve in this capacity. It's a pleasure to be back home, sorry. <laughs> um, and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so there is Danielle. That's the investigator that investigated this complaint that was made against me. So she sees this complaint right here where it says an officer responded to my property and called me an asshole. I don't think that's appropriate. He didn't say he called me an asshole. He said the property owner is becoming an asshole and I don't think that's appropriate. So she takes that complaint. She looks at this dispatch call for service and the part that she keys in on is right here. Trespass authorization form on file for this L. That means location. So what is a trespass authorization form? This is a form that you as a business owner, property owner, what have you, can actually file with the city that says, hey, look, I don't want people on my property when I'm not there. I will sign this form saying that I authorize police officers to respond to my location and remove people from the address and act as my agent when, when they see people there that shouldn't be there. That's what a trespass authorization form is. Knowing that it is on file just allows me to know that if I go by that address later and I see somebody there that's, that shouldn't be there, I can ask them to leave. If they refuse to leave, I can then arrest them and charge them with trespassing without having to call and wake up the owner. If I'm working third shift, it's three in the morning. Often it's hard to find owners of businesses, you know, so I can get consent to charge somebody with trespassing because if, if somebody is trespassing on your property, you are the victim. I have to actually list you on the report and I have to confirm that you're willing to testify against that person. When you fill out a trespassing authorization form, it's basically you are saying ahead of time, look, if you need to arrest somebody on my property, go ahead and do it. Um, here's the authorization to authorization to do so. But what does Miss Danielle Fisher do? She, she calls this guy and I've got the, the audio right here. I'm going to play it for you in just a second. She calls him and she says, Hey, can you do me a favor and send me that trespass authorization file? Because the officer looked at that. He's required to do that. And if he sees that he's required to make an arrest in this case, um, I'll, I'll play you the video right 
quickly. Um, but the thing I also want you to, to, to make you aware of is that what she's saying is not true. It's a lie. It's completely fictitious. She, she completely made this up because she does not understand the policy. And the best part about her not understanding the policy is that the, the property owner does know the pro the policy and he had to explain it to her at the end. So she made an ass out of herself calling this guy. She said she's trying to set up a false um, expectation, trying to say that I did something wrong when I didn't do anything wrong. And this is based purely on her ignorance of the policy that she has available to her. And if she was able to read, she would know these things for herself. But instead she calls the property owner and makes an ass out of herself. And I'm going to play that for you right now. You have the language in there. <laughs> this last incident. Is there any way, um, do you have a copy of the trespassing um, affidavit that you filled out? Uh, yeah, sure. What is your, could you email uh, email that to me, possibly? Yeah, yeah let me uh, get your email address and I can do that. Or what I you, mean, I, so. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's on file. Um, I requested the records. I haven't watched, reviewed the body cam yet. Um, but I'm just trying to get out ahead of this um, discretionary. Um, I want to make sure that you have a, you know, clause in there when they look it up. He did look and he did check. Um, however, he should have made an arrest or he should have uh, written a summons for this individual. Okay. So, yeah. So my understanding is the way that the uh, trespassing form is written is it's at the officer's discretion and he's under no obligation to arrest, but he's got the right to arrest. Is that he, correct? He has the right to, but if you have the language in there, you told me these are known individuals. They're the same people. They are, you know what I mean? So if you have to put language in there, Please remove okay. this. Okay, I don't, I don't have any language other than no one's allowed to be there. Oh. It just says, you know, no one has authorization without, no one has authorization. Okay, that's and fine. I didn't know I was able to put that language yeah, in. Yeah, you I are. Can, then that would be great. Yeah, it, I, if, I'll look at the affidavit. Let me see where we can add that. It needs to be okay. added. Otherwise, we're going to be doing this all winter. It's getting ready to get cold. Whatever it yep. takes for them to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's awesome. Thank you for your help. Okay. I'll email you. Alrighty. That, that's all I'm going to play of that. Uh, what she was saying, I'm going to put her face back up here now. Um, what she was saying on that call is completely fictitious. It's completely wrong. It's a lie. It's a complete fabric fabrication. She has absolutely no idea what she's talking about. And the problem with this is that she represents the city. She's the person that was hired to hold officers accountable, to make sure that officers are following proper policies and procedures when somebody calls in and makes a complaint. So I had somebody that called in and made a complaint against me and she called them, told them that I violated policy and all this other stuff. And the actual person making the complaint had to tell her, no, that's, that's not what it is. And she, so then she tried to backtrack and say, well, you can put that language in there, which is absolutely bullshit. She's lying. She doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. And she's the one that's supposed to be investigating me and telling me how to do my job. That's the issue with this. Yeah. At the end of the day, I, I, I'll tell you a little bit of more background. When I went in for the interview, and she opens up, she had a manila folder there and she had the, the, the 16 T the, uh, trespassing directive up. And I said, well, what was the complaint made against me? Cause I saw that she had that stuff and I'd already heard the phone calls I said, what was the complaint made against me? She said, well, the, he called in and he was upset that people have been trespassing and nobody has been arresting these people. I said, no, that's, that's not what his complaint was. Um, we can look at it together. I'll pull it up again. Here's the complaint. His complaint was that I responded to his address and I told a homeless person, Hey, you know, the city's cracking down on this guy because of that he's going to be becoming an asshole. That's just the way the world works. You can't be here. And he thought that that was unprofessional, but she didn't have anything on her little notebook about professional behavior, swearing, anything like that. She had everything about trespass authorization. And I told her, look, I'm not required to look at the trespass authorization when I'm responding to a call. The only time I need a trespass authorization is when I'm going to take enforcement activity. 
And then she also told him over the phone, he saw this. He's required to look at this. You know, he, he looked at it. He confirmed it before he arrived. That's not true. That's not true at all. I was dispatched on the call at 1126. At 1128, there's notes added that he has a trespass authorization on file. I never looked at the computer again because I didn't need to. If there was something important, the dispatcher would have let me know. But that's also not important because I wasn't taking enforcement activity. So I had to look at her. I'm going to put her face back up. I had to look at her. I said, what was the complaint made against me? She's him and hauling, couldn't figure it out. And I said, here's, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what the complaint made against me was. He's upset that I used the word asshole when I responded to a call to remove somebody from his property. Now, you, your job is to investigate whether or not that was rude and discourteous, and you have to know the past practice revolving around being rude and discourteous. Swearing in itself is not considered rude and discourteous. Many people would also believe that the word asshole doesn't even count as a swear word. In order for it to be rude and discourteous, based on past practices on the department, I have to be calling somebody a name. I have to be rude towards a person. So if I showed up and saw this homeless person, I said, hey, asshole, I'm tired of you making a mess here. You need to get up and get the hell out or I'm going to put you under arrest. That would be rude and discourteous. But instead, what I did is I said, hey, dude, listen, the guy that owns this building, he's getting a lot of pressure from the city and that's causing him to become an asshole. He's going to have to, he's going to start demanding that we arrest people on his property. I don't want to do that. Tell your friends, don't come back. I was not being rude. I was being very nice, very sincere. I was talking to the guy in a language that he understood in a manner that he understood and in a way that would prevent me from having to come back. What I was doing was I was doing the owner of that building a service. I was doing him a favor. I was doing my job. I was trying to make sure that people understood not to come back to this property. And my reward for that, I don't know why it keeps coming back up, is a property owner <laughs> that says, I would like proper advice on how I should handle this and comply. As of right now, I don't feel safe on my own property at this point. I don't feel that the police are on my side. I couldn't have been any more on the property owner's side during this entire incident. I got a call about a person trespassing on a property. I got that person to leave the property and I told him to tell all of his friends not to come back. That's exactly what I was called and asked to do. My reward for doing my job is I get a complaint filed against me. I get an investigator that doesn't understand how to do her job, doesn't understand the rules, policies, and procedures that she's supposed to make sure that I'm following. And that is giving bad information to the public. Thank God this particular guy understood what a trespass authorization form actually was. Because if it was somebody else that wasn't as well informed, they would have become even more upset. They would have been telling their friends, listen, I had a, an officer come to my property. He called me an asshole. And on top of it, he didn't even do his job. I've said it thousands of times over. The stuff that is creating a divide between the police officers and the community is misinformation. People speaking lies as if they are true. People giving out misinformation about what it is that the police are doing and what they are supposed to be doing. And when one of those people is the investigator for the city, the liaison between the city and the community who's complaining about police officers, when that person doesn't know the rules and is lying about what those policies are, that's what creates a divide. So Miss Danielle Fisher, investigator for the office of the inspector general, you are not equipped to do your job. You are making things worse. You are a failure. You should not have a job. Those are my thoughts.